Joining us this morning is Carlos Varela. Car Carlos is a professor at the UDD in Santiago, Chile, where he directs the programs in entrepreneurship that are seeking to create a, an increasingly vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem, both inside the university and outside and connecting with practice. Carlos, fantastic to have you with us. Welcome aboard. Thank you, John. It's an honor. Carlos, several years ago in Chile, Startup Chile sort of burst into the world's attention uh, from an unlikely place. What's happened since then, and has Startup Chile make it, made a difference in Chile? Well, for, first, uh, I would say that the entrepreneurship ecosystem in, in Chile has been increasingly uh, becoming more and more important even before Startup Chile. I would, um, I love. Uh, the fact that uh, in Chile um, external affairs and innovation entrepreneurship it's the only topics that people are like you know agreeing uh, always agreeing in, in, in the country so actually we've had many years uh, maybe a couple of decades with uh, with quite uh, good uh, public policy around um, entrepreneurship and innovation and specifically startup Chile like four or five years ago uh, became like globally famous because uh, we it was a way to import uh, global entrepreneurs to our local ecosystem so they would uh, develop uh, an early stage of their projects here um, together with uh, local engineers with local professionals uh, getting in touch with universities getting in touch with different agents of the ecosystem, and that would that would uh, make um, our ecosystem uh, more developed and prepared for our own entrepreneurs to develop uh, better startups uh, for uh, for the for the global markets. So that obviously gave us a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, visibility uh, around the world because we were bringing entrepreneurs from everywhere. Uh, but that was not the main uh, objective of the public policy, although it was one of the major consequences. Yeah. The, 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 the idea is that they, these guys develop this, their startups here and kind of be contagious to the other agents of the, of the ecosystem. Yeah. So as, as Chilean entrepreneurs think about getting a business underway, where do they look today for capital? Well, uh, Capital, you have a lot of um, government subsidies for capital for early stage, and that has been increasing for the last 10 years. I think this is a good thing also. Uh, and then also you, you would be, you, could, you can see um, some VC um, firms that are uh, starting to, to grow also. The government has also subsidized uh, I think it's three to one or two to one, uh, the subsidy that the government gives to uh, VCs that are uh, creating now in Chile. I would say there's kind of a gap, uh, and many of the people in the ecosystem in Chile would say would say the same thing that there's kind of a gap between the 100,000 investment and the one million or 1.5 million dollar investment. Uh, there's a gap there, and actually. That's why, uh, you know, uh, customer funded businesses is also so important to understand here in Chile and I would say all Latin America. So, so let's expand our, our view here beyond Chile and, and talk about Latin America. What's happening in the, in the entrepreneurial world on the continent? Well, it's a similar, similar phenomena. I would say the number of entrepreneurs, the number of the entrepreneurs that are um, getting into the system with uh, innovative ideas has been increasing for the last years. Uh, I would say in, 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 in many of the countries uh, in, in Latin America, especially in those that have been uh, in, uh, growing economies, uh, I would say Colombia is a huge uh, hub for innovation and entrepreneurship as well as Chile. 
you would say similar things about Brazil. Uh, you would find also in Argentina a, a huge group of talented entrepreneurs that actually have uh, developed a, 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 an important number of the unicorns that Latin America has been uh, creating for the last years. Uh, so uh, I think this is a, on the entrepreneurial side, I would say Latin America is doing quite well. On the I would say maybe on the ecosystemic side and in the venture capital side, I think we have much, much to develop yet. I think there is the gap uh, and, and we are trying different things like bringing also investment from, from uh, markets such as Silicon Valley, but you know it's, it's always different when it's not a local capital ven uh, venture uh, finance. So it's yeah, it's. I hope in the future this 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 could fix, but it's it's slow because you would like this this uh, capital to be here right now when we are having great projects, great startups, and they are needing uh, someone who understands how this works to put money in their projects. Right. So w when you talk to entrepreneurs, you come across who say, "Gee, you know, I need some more money to get my business." To the next level, and you talk about getting that money from the customer. What, what's their reaction? Well, they don't. They don't understand how. Uh, <laughs> right. Actually, uh, it's it's quite new for them. It's uh, you won't find uh, in many universities, in many colleges here in Chile, uh, people teaching entrepreneurship. Uh, with this kind of concepts. Uh, it's still more on the project management side, uh, but you know, UDD and some other universities like Católica uh, or Adolfo Ibáñez or even Universidad de Chile, maybe you will find maybe the top universities that are, have, have really devo been devoted to entrepreneurship and innovation for the last years, you would find professors that are really following uh, the main trends in uh, in um, in uh, competences in entrepreneurial competences, uh, but uh, that's not the majority. So, so then in those places you could find some guys talking about these methods. Uh, you also would find some consulting companies, some some maybe more than consulting companies, like you would say. Um, Companies like uh, organizing hackathons and organizing mm -hmm. uh, like boot camps, uh, those are the guys also like are talking about these methods. Yep. Uh, also some accelerators, some incubators. Um, and th that, that is where this knowledge in some way is. Yeah. So in, in many parts of the world, there's a, there's a popular sentiment that startups are a good thing and that small business is a good thing and that they're and those are seen as job creation kind of programs. And, and that seems to be the case in Chile as well. But you and I know that for every startup that's getting underway, there's another one down the street that just failed. And, and so there's an awful lot of churn in that money. Are there, yeah. prog are there programs to help with sort of the next stage of growth? That is to get the ones that maybe, you know, have made a little bit of progress to get them growing. Because, you know, isn't that where the jobs are really created in those kind of businesses? Yeah, uh, I, I would agree, and I would say, uh, actually, that's part of the gap I am describing. I think um, maybe we are uh, doing too much on the entrance, in the white part of the funnel. We're doing a great job, but then, you know, it's not that good uh, later on. And I think the, the government is trusting a lot the private sector to, to, to be... Um, Kind of in charge of that, but I would say there's where knowledge. I think knowledge and culture is needed. You know, to understand uh, how does um, a risky investment works in in startups. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think you're a wonderful example that that uh, that could be emulated in in many emerging markets. You know, oh. Chile is on the map, and not every emerging market is. And I, I think yeah. you guys you yeah. guys have done a great job. Yeah. Yes. Well, Carlos, yeah. it's been fantastic to have you here and sort of share this perspective about Chile and the rest of Latin America. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this today. Many thanks. Great to talk to you as always. And I look forward to seeing you soon. 
Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Bye. Thank you.